join my Patreon at patreon.com slash bunnytails for the full uncut reactions. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Star Trek The Original Series. Today we're going to be watching an episode from Season 2 called Return to Tomorrow. I wonder if there's going to be any time travel involved in this episode because the title Return to Tomorrow kind of reminds me of Tomorrow is Yesterday, where it's kind of an oxymoron, like tomorrow can't be yesterday because tomorrow is the future and yesterday is the past. And how can you return to tomorrow if tomorrow is technically the future and hasn't happened yet? So maybe some time travel. That's all I got on that one, but I'm excited to find out what it's going to be all about today. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the comments. The reading's growing stronger, Captain. Coming from a star system directly ahead. Sulu's back. We are hundreds of light years past where any Earth ship has ever explored. Oh, they're far out there in unknown territory. Sensors detect no life of any kind. All your questions will be answered in time, Captain Kirk. Oh, good. That's good to know. Strange, mysterious, omnipotent voice. I am Sargon. I read what is in your mind. Words are unnecessary. That's unsettling. And I am as dead as my planet. I am as dead as my planet. Is he a ghost? If you let what is left of me perish, then all of you, my children, all of mankind must perish too. Hmm. So, his physical form might have perished, but there's still some sort of a soul, essence, spirit that remains. He called us children, and that if he perishes, then humans should as well, or will as well. A world destroyed and dead for at least a half a million years. The energy of pure thought telling us something has survived here for those thousands of centuries. Sounds really lonely. Please come to us. Rescue us from oblivion. Us? Under at least 100 miles of solid rock. We I will be... make it possible for your transporter to beam you that deep beneath the surface. Have no fear. I would fear. Captain, I do wish to inspect whatever this is that lived that long ago. We can't risk both of us being off the ship. We forgot to pay the electric bill. Perhaps the Sargon would like you to come with us. Fascinating. <laughs> Why did he just think that to us? Will you transport down with us, Mr. Spock? Evidently, Captain. Evidently. <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> the transporter coordinates preset by uh, an alien of some sort. You could materialize inside solid rock. That would be bad. The feeling that they or it could destroy us just standing here if they or it wanted to. They or it. Well, hello. I don't think we've met. Who are you? <laughs> well, I was ordered to report here for landing party duty. By whom? Well, I'm not a liar, Captain. By the entity, maybe just as you received an order to bring me along. Yep. Well, let's get back to this solid rock business. Approximately 112.37 miles, Doctor. Miles? Are you joking? No, we're not. Let's go. <laughs> Aw, two of them didn't get... <laughs> they didn't get the call to go. Captain, the security guards. This vault was constructed about a half million years ago. About the same time the planet's surface was destroyed. Maybe they knew something catastrophic was going to happen and then they made like a, a bunker? The air seems fresh. It must be recirculated somehow. Is that for us or does it need fresh air? Maybe it did at one time, but maybe it doesn't anymore. Welcome. I am Saga. Sealed in this receptacle is the essence of my mind. Okay. But you once had a body of some type. A body much as yours, my children. That's twice you've referred to us as my children. 
Because it is possible you are our descendants, Captain Kirk. And the records of our travels were lost in the cataclysm which we loosened upon ourselves. Upon themselves? Said you wanted our help. What is it you wish? I... Oh. Um... Sargon. Back to where you were, Sargon. Or whatever you are. And if he refuses, Doctor, what do you propose to do with your phaser? <laughs> Good question. Is he gonna do a dance? To see again. I don't think he's gonna want to get out of there. Your captain is quite unharmed. Are you aware of what's happening to his body? He'll die if you don't leave his body soon. What is it you want of us? The voice is Kirk's voice, isn't it? The other two of us that survived. With effects on it, reverb and stuff. We require your bodies also. There's that we again. So that we may live again. I thought he was nice. I thought Sargon was nice and that he just wanted us to help him without sacrificing our bodies and just taking it over. Two of us still survive. Anna and Thalesa. Thalesa, my Thalesa. Oh, his lover. Only the best minds were chosen to survive. Thalesa, my wife, and not from the other side. Oh, so even some of their enemies from both sides. And then one day my mind touched your vessel and brought you here. So you could steal our bodies from us? We mean only that you should lend us your bodies for a short time. Heartbeat 262, Spock. I oh, will return suddenly your sweating. to you before the body limit has been reached. Then you intend to construct mechanical bodies, move your minds into them and then return our bodies to us. We have engineers, technicians. Why can't they build your robots for yeah, you? Yeah, with inst instruction. Our skills are far beyond your abilities. I mean, if you just you have to tell them what to do, you're not gonna be able to build anything like that, sir. I guess he's switching back. Well, if he can only be in Kirk's body for like five minutes, I just don't see how this is gonna work. Do you remember any part of it? Yes. I remember. For an instant, we were one. I know what he is and what he wants. And I don't fear him. That's good. He sympathizes. You could be suffering from a form of a false euphoria. Hmm. Go to your vessel. All who are involved must agree to this. Okay, so he is nice. You're going to what? <laughs> Are they all right in the head, Doctor? Scotty, I need your approval, too. Since you'll be working with them... You won't be working with them, you'll be working with us, our bodies. It all seems rather indecent to me. It is scientifically fascinating. Bones, they'll show us medical advances, miracles you never dreamed possible. Scotty, engineering advances. I feel like that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Engines the size of walnuts. Oh, you're joking. They're giants and we're insects beside them. They could destroy us without meaning to. What's your attitude on that, Doctor? I'm willing to host the laces mind. The opportunity is, is an extraordinary one. A starship engine the size of a walnut? He's just stuck on that. <laughs> I don't suppose there'd be any harm in looking over diagrams on it. Bones, you could stop all this by saying no. Dr. McCoy is right in pointing out the enormous danger potential. But I must point out that the possibilities the potential is equally great. And their five-year mission... Risk is our business. Yeah. So what they do. That's what the Starship is all about. That's why we're aboard her. That's a really nice reminder. Do I hear a negative vote? Engineer. Stand by to beam aboard three receptacles. Okay. <laughs> These disco balls are on our, on our ship. Spock goes inside other creatures' minds all the time. Not necessarily in this way, exactly, but for once he's on the receiving the end of that. Is complete. Metabolic rate is double and rising, Doctor. Hello. 
Oh, you are a lovely female. <laughs> oh, she she gonna like this. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Wow, he's already like super smiley, way more animated. I forgot what it felt like, even to breathe again. Okay, but we're kind of got to hurry, right? Sada. Here. We do not have time for a quick shag. I am not displeased, my husband. But I too am pleased. Look at Christine. She, she's a romantic at heart. This is an excellent body, Doctor. But I'm surprised the Vulcans never conquered your race. The Vulcans worship peace above all, Hannah. Yes, of course, of course, just as we do, Doctor. I wonder if we can trust him. He was their enemy. You've got to get out before you kill them. We will vacate at once. Until you can administer a metabolic reduction injection. I'll prepare the formula, Sargon. We will vacate at once. Yeah, that does not last very long. They spent their whole time kissing and cuddling. This formula will reduce the heart action and the bodily functions to normal. This hypo you will code mark for Thalesa. This one for me. This one you will administer to Captain Kirk while Sargon is in his body. This hypo does not contain the same formula. Without the same formula, Captain Kirk will die. What were you saying? I wanted to say something. I've forgotten what it was. I knew it. He was too smiley to trust. Sargon would not permit me to keep this body. It is therefore necessary for you to kill your captain so that Sargon will die with him. Oh my goodness. So Kirk fused minds for a time with Sargon and felt that he could trust him, but he doesn't know about this guy. I can find no reason for concern, but yet I am filled with foreboding. As you should be. We sat beside a silver lake. And the air was scented with the flowers of our planet. You held my hand. In two days, you'll have hands of your own again, boys. Android robot hands, of course. Hands without feeling. <laughs> Enjoy the taste of life while you can. Man, I was excited to see such a smiley Nimoy episode, but now he's like evil smiling and I don't like it. Something wrong, Miss Chapel. I had something to say and I, I can't seem to remember. Regarding our patients. You look tired, Miss Chapel. Perhaps you'd care for me to administer the last few injections. Oh, not at all, Doctor. Thank you for asking. Oh, dear. How will something that looks like a drop of jelly make this thing work? It will have twice the strength and agility of your body, Engineer, and will last a thousand years. That is assuming you'll stop wasting your time and allow us to complete it. <laughs> Jeez, this guy. And when it wears out, we'll build another one. And we'll lock ourselves into it for another thousand. Years. He likes her. He wants her all to himself. That's his motive. And you awoke in this body, Felisa. You see how good it was to breathe again? Would you prefer this? No. Oh, boy. Sargon, what is it? Fatigue. An Oxford. The formula is correct. But not the one that they gave you. There, you see. I feel better already. You lie. Feel the touch of my hand, husband. Can robot lips do this? But what about the people who own the bodies? Does nobody here have a conscience, Sargon? Or trusted you. Sargon. What is it? He should know that, I mean, he indicated that Sargon's intentions weren't bad. That's not doing anything. Probably cranberry juice or something. Figure it out, McCoy. He's dead. Huh? Oh, that Enoch, whatever his name is. Sargon is dead, but is Captain Kirk dead? 
his body is, but his consciousness is still in the receptacle. Oh, shit. They're gonna have to build Kirk a robot. His vital organs are now working, Doctor. Yes, we can keep them going for a few weeks or a month for all the good it'll do. How are they gonna put him back in there? Is that the android I pretend body? to work on that thing, Hannah. This is your new home, Felicia. Once occupied, I'll add female features and some texturing. Why doesn't she get a human body if you do? And if it was for her, why didn't you just build it with boobs to start with? It is ready, Felicia. No. I cannot live in that thing. I thought he wanted her to have a real body with him and then they can run off and be happy. Doctor. Would you like to save your Captain Kirk? This body pleases me. I intend to keep it. If you're asking my approval. Only you and I will know that Dr. Mulhall has not returned to her body. Isn't that worth your Captain's life? Neither Jim nor I can trade a body we don't own. Almost a stranger to you. I will not peddle flesh. He's a doctor. Mm-mm. First do no harm. Destroy you with a single thought. Hey, leave him alone. Bring the Sargon back. He wanted to learn from their mistakes to teach humans how to not go down Sargon the road that right. they went down. They viewed the themselves as gods. Body are too great. I am pleased, my beloved. <gasps> Sargon. Sargon. Where are you? He's in the. He's in the Enterprise. Sargon has placed his into your vessel. Editing Bunny here. She said vessel. Sargon is in the vessel. But when I was watching this, I didn't hear that. I couldn't hear what she said. So just ignore my questions later about where he went. But I was right. Ha! I was right. Doctor, leave us. Sargon has a plan. We have much work to do. Wait, was I right? Is he is he the ship? Nurse Chapel, what in the devil? What? Yes? Are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. Oh, good. She is now with Sargon, Doctor. I I'm Ann Mulhall. Back in my own body. Spock's consciousness was in one of them. It was necessary. You've killed a loyal officer. Your best friend. Bones prepare a hypo, the fastest, deadliest poison to Vulcans. Spock's consciousness is gone. What? We must kill his body. What? This is a, like a horror show right now. Fortunately, Doctor, I know every thought. Take the hypo from him. He can just control her mind? And inject him with it. No, 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 no! Steve! Oh, <laughs> what? I'll simply transfer to another place. Sargon! No, Sargon, please. Let me transfer. chest compressions my friend Spock why is Spock always dying I could not allow your sacrifice of one so close to you Jim you're alive enough poison in that hypo to kill ten Balkans no doctor I allowed you to believe that to be true so that Henock would read your thoughts and believe it also. oh smart the injection was only enough to cause unconsciousness. So where was Spock's mind in Christine? He is destroyed. Where was your consciousness kept? Mr. Spock's consciousness was placed in me. Where was yours? We shared consciousness together. Oh, they were oh, they were in there together. Oh, I bet she liked that. <laughs> the Lisa and I must now also depart into oblivion. Is there any way we can help you, Sargon? A last moment together. Oh, it's so poetic. They said yes. So she 
she would have passed by Elisa mind and so she she trusts her also i think to give her body back just for a moment oblivion together does not frighten me beloved but don't they die promise we'll be together together forever forever I'm sure that uh, Sargon appreciated your cooperation. Happy to cooperate, Captain. I'll bet. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was. They they departed into oblivion, like in the act of physically touching and kissing and all that. I really liked that episode. There was smiling Spock, even though he was evil. It was still cute to see. Um, we had some really sweet moments with, like, Christine Chapel. Um, it was a little love story, which I'm always a fan of. Return to tomorrow. I'm not sure I quite understand exactly what the title means, but that's okay. It was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. I don't really understand why Hanok didn't want... To, uh, it's hard without the subtitles to really know what these names are. Thalassia? To be... to stay in the human body, why he wanted her to be in the android body? Because she stopped cooperating with him after that. And I think if he just kept on saying that she would be able to stay in that body, maybe I missed some dialogue, but... If he didn't tell her to get in the android, I think their plan could have definitely worked. It's kind of a tragic story when you think about it, because Sargon and Thalassia waited thousands of years to be able to get inside something that could move around, whether it be an android or whatever. But I think they got to experience being alive again for a short time and they got to embrace one another and really just communicate with one another how much they loved each other and when they realized that they couldn't continue on like that without harming other people I guess they just felt enough contentment enough closure that they were able to just after thousands and thousands of years of waiting just it was kind of almost all for nothing, but not not really. They didn't get what they wanted in the end, but they got something else that was definitely worth it to them. I really, really enjoyed Leonard Nimoy acting as Hanok. That smile, that smugness, the animatedness of him. And there were a lot of twists and turns in the episode with Hanok going against the original plan and trying to kill Kirk and Sargon and then Nurse Chapel getting taken over by Spock. So I guess when she left the closed medical room doors, that was Spock walking out. And I suppose that Sargon was able to communicate somehow with Spock but I don't understand where Sargon and Thalassia went after their receptacles were destroyed and they were both out of the bodies. Where was their mind's essence in that time? Or do they not need the receptacle? Maybe they could just float about in the air, at least for maybe just a limited time. I don't know. All right, well... I will head out now, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I look forward to reading your comments as always, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.